best you can, tell me what happened with Bob Myers and the, the Warriors. Well, I don't want to try to get into Bob's head, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to say that he's 48 years old. Um, I understand that uh, there's burnout. We all get burnout uh, in our jobs. Um, he is not retiring, you know. Um, you know, you know. I don't know if he'll ever be a GM again, but he's not retiring. I think what you have here is you have a really difficult period for the Warriors. They're they're facing uh, a payroll. If they re-sign Draymond Green, I'm not making any assumptions that they are or aren't. But if they re-sign him to any reasonable number, they're looking at nearly five hundred million dollars next year in um, in payroll and, and luxury taxes. Five hundred million. It'll be the most expensive team in the history of professional sports. And that team finished sixth this year and got knocked out in the second round. And if I was Joe Lakeup, and again, I do not want to say that I know what he's going to do, Rich, but if it were me, I'm not sure I want to spend $500 million on a sixth place team. Hmm. And so you have a situation where Draymond is prepared for an extension. You have Clay Thompson, who's one year off from an extension and I'm sure is going to want to be taken care of. You have Steve Kerr, who is in the final year of his contract, and I'm sure is going to want to be taken care of. And this is why there's a life cycle on, on dynasties. You reach either age out or you get too expensive or, you know, there's issues about who gets what. And they're facing the frontier of that. And Bob Myers looked at that whole thing, and maybe that wasn't the why he said I'm leaving. But all of those things are there. And he said, you know what, I'm not going to stay here. So you can make of your decision what you will but all of those factors are certainly on the table in front of the Warriors well is it fair to say then that the reserve that Myers used to have uh in copious amounts or the reserve that he used to have that would be required certainly for this moment that you just laid out um got one would say um drained by last season significantly and the Draymond punch of Jordan Poole is what really pulled the plug on the train. I don't I don't want to assume that Rich, but here's what I'll tell you. In twenty nineteen, before game five, I had written a story that day about organizational fatigue that happens when it when a team goes for a title three, four, five years in a row. I saw it happen in Miami with LeBron. I saw it happen in Cleveland with LeBron. And I had written a story about how it just, it's not that you're physically tired. The organization from competing where you trade your draft picks and you can't play young players and you're under pressure every trade day deadline, every season starts long and they send you overseas to start training camp because you're one of the high profile teams. The whole thing has a wearing effect uh, that, it, you know, occurs in the NBA. And Bob pulled me aside before the game and said, my gosh, that's so true. We are totally being a feel, the organizational fatigue. That was in 2019. Mm. So think of everything that's happened. That night was the night that Durant uh, tore his Achilles. So think of everything that's happened just since 2019. And they're, and, you know, just emotionally and, um, you know, everything, they were fatigued back then. So imagine where they are now. And they're facing, again, another mountain of challenges that comes at them. I mean, I get it. I get it, but I also think it's relevant when you think about what's going to happen next, that after all this, he is raising his hand and saying, okay, I'm tapping out. Right, and Joe Lacob said he didn't get it. He's like, uh, I don't understand it, you know, but I, I, whatever makes him happy, he referred to Bob as his fifth child. Um, so let's talk about the, the next. What is, what is next? What do you think Lacob's move is going to be, Brian? Well, he's got to decide what he's going to pay Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, and Steve Kerr. Um, you know, and the thing about it is, I mean, Adrian Wojnarowski reported right at the end of the regular season that, that, um, you know, Clay Thompson was looking for a maximum contract extension and rich. I just don't think the, I just think it'd be very hard for the Warriors to do that. The mm -hmm. amount of money that it would cost. I think it'd be very hard. I'm not, again, I don't want this to be attributed to me that I'm saying they're not going to, I'm just telling you it would be very difficult to go to that level with, with what it would cost them with what they've already got committed. And look, maybe they've got a trade that they can do that would vastly reduce payroll. Um, it's just, you know, this is not Steve Ballmer. They are a very wealthy organization. They bring in a ton of money, but they are not, they do not have bottomless pockets. They had the, the ownership of the Warriors in the last three years sold off a piece of the team 
to a private equity group, and they sold off a piece of the arena, which you know that arena is a cash cow. Uh, they sold off a piece of it to another group um, to fund how expensive this team is and losing money, not because they wanted to buy a bigger yacht. <laughs> That's what Paul Allen did. These guys are, 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 are selling equity in the team to pay for the annual bill. And I know that it's not fun to talk about money. You want to say, well, what about how Draymond Green is going to fit with Steph Curry and how do they match up with the Lakers or the Nuggets? I mean, that's all true. But these decisions that happen in June and July, but see, these are money decisions. And the Warriors are smack up against in just outrageous sums of money that are due. They're smack up against a whole bunch of rule changes that have been put in in the new collective bargaining agreement directly to limit them, basically – Almost every move that they've made in the last three years has been legislated out in the new collective bargaining agreement. Um, they're just facing all this pressure pounding down on top of them. It's not easy. I mean, they are they they have four rings, so you're not going to don't lay awake tonight and worry about them. <laughs> but you know, they're in a really difficult situation about keeping this together. And you know, he, the first stress point we've got a break here with Bob Myers asking out. And in terms of Myers um, asking out, when is he exactly free? Um, you know, and it's interesting you mentioned Balmer's name. I mean, every Clipper fan down here in Los Angeles, knowing that there's a general manager vacancy here in Los Angeles, is thinking maybe Bob wants to come uh, come home, you know, Southern California. Well, what do you think? Well, that's not the same. Lawrence Frank is the president of basketball operations the general manager job in, at the Clippers is, number, is the number two job. Right. But um, I'm not sure that um, Bob is leaving because he's immediately trying to go get another job. Uh, I would be surprised if he doesn't work again, but I'm, I don't think that's what this is. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 